With regard to land leases, yes. what's a renewal process like? Yes. Yeah, that answer is, is provided in your lease. Okay. Yes, but because we don't, we don't, often we don't read our leases. Every lease or transaction or every lease document will give you the, the term of the lease. Okay. It will say either 99 years or 50 years. That's the term of the lease. It will give you the commencement date and then the expiring date. Right. And then it will provide a renewal clause. Three to six months before the expiration of your lease, apply to the lessor for a renewal. In this case, 80, it's, it's your grandparents who yes. are dealing with yes. the family you bought, the, the person you bought the land from yes. at that time. Yes. How, how is it like? You know, you. After such a long time. Yes, that's why you have the document. You have, you have to take note of the commencement date, the expir expiration okay. date, and then the term. And you expect your grand, your great great grandchildren to have access to the document, okay. and that's why they normally keep copies at the land commission as a custody, as a backup for right. the owners. So you have to read what is in the document, and then it will also cite the owners. It will give the address of the owners. Right. So I will expect that you have to find a way to locate the owners. What happens if I don't go? If you don't. Go to them for a renewal. I'm, I'm afraid if you don't go for a renewal, mm -hmm. you'll be sitting in your property with no interest. Okay. Because the superstructure consists of bundle of interest, which we explained earlier on. Okay. And your interest, you have a tenure. Mm -hmm. And if that interest is expired, it's like eating an expiring food. Mm -hmm. It's poisonous. Okay. Let me, let me give a scenario. Yes. I bought the land at 100,000 cities yes. some years ago. Now my grandparents, my grandchildren have inherited. Yes. So they go back to the, they go back for a renewal. Yes. Um, at that point, do yes. I, how, how do they determine how much I'm supposed to pay for renewal? Exactly. Once you have the renewal clause, right. the law is behind you. Okay. That renewal cannot be unnecessarily denied. You can go to court and get the court to compel them to renew it for you. So once there's a renewal clause in your lease, you have a legal backing. So you have the confidence to work to the owners, provided you've applied within the stipulated time, three to six months. To six months. So put in your application, and they will define new terms and conditions, and also tell you for how long they are going to grant the new lease. Okay. That, those terms and conditions, by law, have to be mutually agreed upon. Right. They cannot impose the terms and conditions on you. Mm -hmm. They will say, oh, okay, we are going to give you another 50 years. Okay. And for the 50 years, you pay a premium or a lump sum of X amount. And then every year, we expect you to pay a ground rent of K. Will the amount be the value of the land at the time? The value, yes, yeah, the consideration, we call it consideration. Okay. Every transaction has a consideration. Right. The consideration, it could be a price or it could be a rent. Okay. For leases, they are in two components, the lump sum and the ground rent. Mm -hmm. You pay a lump sum and then you pay a ground rent. Mm -hmm. The lump sum and the rent is determined based on the current value. Okay. At the time of the negotiation. If you have occupied the land for 90 years, 90 years when you go to negotiate, they will reassess the value of the land at the time of negotiation. Mm -hmm. But like I said earlier on, the terms and conditions have to be mutually agreed upon. Mm -hmm. And what I normally say is, before you go into the negotiations for the renewal, please consult a valuer or a land economist. Yeah. He will determine the current values mm -hmm. and then also advise you on the, what we call the floor price and the ceiling price. You know, we have a floor price and a ceiling price. What's the floor price? In between, you can always agree. The floor price is the minimum you can get. Right. The ceiling price is the maximum you can get. Mm -hmm. Between the minimum and the maximum, there's always a way of agreeing upon. So the valuer will advise you that this is the minimum price and this is the maximum that you can go. But in between, go and negotiate for this level. All right. So the negotiation will be between you and the landowners. Mm -hmm. And you have to agree upon it. If you feel they are being too hard, they are so strong, mm -hmm. and they are 
having a better bargaining power, you have the right to seek a court order. Okay. You can go to court with your application mm -hmm. and make your case out. Mm -hmm. Because there's an element of reasonableness. Okay. They have to be reasonable in their terms and conditions. So as, as, as LSE, you have every right to enforce the clause in your lease. Mm -hmm. But make sure that there's a renewal clause, clause. in the lease. Make sure in a in the absence of a renewal clause, mm -hmm. your chances are 50-50. Right. Okay. In the absence of a renewal clause. Mm -hmm. So before you take a lease, make sure you have a renewal clause. Okay. In the absence of a renewal clause in your lease, mm -hmm. the landowners have an upper hand against you. You are a weaker negotiator. Mm -hmm. okay. Because they may decide not to renew. Because there's no, they are not bound by any clause to renew for you. Mm -hmm. So insist always to have a renewal clause in your lease. Right. Is there anything that can make me lose my land? So I buy it. It's been there 10 years, 15 years. I haven't done anything on it. No, maybe you want to use your land for a residential or an industrial plot. Yes. So you bought your land. You just want to start your factory on the land. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. The ownership of land is different from land use regulations. Right. Yes. Okay. There's a law, the Land Use and Special Planning Act, 2016, Act 925, mm -hmm. mandates every property owner to go to the assembly and obtain a permit before you use your land. Having purchased a land gives you the right to use the land. Mm -hmm. But the assembly has control over the use. So once you buy your land, the next thing to do is to make sure that the use clause in your lease conforms to the clause or the scheme of the area. So you can't just buy land and start construction. You need a permit. Right. And in the application process, the assembly will determine whether that piece of land has been zoned mm -hmm. or earmarked for residential. Okay. If unfortunately, like I said earlier on, if the assembly had already earmarked the land for a refuse dump, it means you cannot use your land. Right. So we have the assemblies as the authorities for planning in this country. And you need a permit from there before you can you develop need a your permit land. From there. Let's wrap up the conversation with double sales. Um, 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 how, how common is this at the Land Commission? How, how common is this? D double sales, you've... People, people selling land to two people, the same plot of land to two people at the same time. And then what are, what are some of the charges that could be labeled against you when you indulge in double sales? It's criminal. Okay. Uh, but it's not something with the land committee. It's something in the real estate market. Right. It's, it's of a general concern. Right. The land market is developing. It's not yet developed. Mm -hmm. The market is developing. So these are some of the challenges or the weaknesses of the market. Wow. Double sale. Okay. So it's, it's not common to find a property with a logo on it, not for sale. <laughs> Which is the opposite. <laughs> you want to see for sale on buildings. <laughs> but in this part of the world, in our market, you rather find not for sale because mm -hmm. of double sale yeah. problems. It's, 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 a, it's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And it occurs because we rush. Right. We don't do due diligence. Mm -hmm. Due yes. I'm sure we, that's your favorite word. Yes, due diligence. That is the secret. Yes. So if you take your time, if you hasten slowly, mm -hmm. you walk through the A to Z of land acquisition, mm -hmm. you'll be convinced that you are dealing with the rightful person. Right. You'll be convinced that the document given to you is genuine. Mm -hmm. you also be convinced that the document can be registered. Mm. Once you have all these assurances, there's no way another party can sell that land to a second prospective buyer. Right. So double sale can be avoided mm -hmm. if we hasten slowly. Hasten slowly, do your due diligence. Those are the